Welcome, everybody, to another episode of From Adversity to Abundance podcast. I am your host, Jamie Bateman, and I'm super excited today as I'm joined by Chris Larson of Next Level Income. Chris, how are you doing today? Jamie, I'm doing great. Awesome. So I know you uh, we're somewhat familiar with each other. I know you have your own podcast and you have a bunch of you know, investments. You have a, several funds, I think, that you run and you have a lot going on. I know you're a busy guy. So again, I really do appreciate you taking the, the time out of your busy schedule to chat with us. Um, for those listeners who are not familiar with you, why don't you give us kind of a high level overview of who you are today and what you have going on? Yeah, thank you for that. Look, I love this podcast because one of the big things that I talk about is the abundance mindset. And it, it's so important. It's the number one thing I tell people that they can do is surround themselves with people with the abundance mindset versus scarcity. You have to eliminate those people from your life. And you really have to be ruthless, unfortunately, um, when it comes to that, um, of spending the time around the right people. And also, if you're listening today, uh, you can grab a copy of my book. I'll send you a free copy, nextlevelincome.com. Just click on the book link. And it talks a lot about the things that we're going to talk about the, today, Jamie. But yeah, today we have Next Level Income. We focus on two things. Number one is education helping people become financially independent and giving them the resources to do it. And then, yeah, we also have investment opportunities for investors. And we work mostly with accredited investors. And what we do is we search for institutional quality assets. We're looking for, you know, 100 plus, actually more like two to 300 unit apartment complexes at this point, um, hotels, self-storage units, mobile home parks. We started buying car washes this year after building out a team for car washes. I was actually just in Nashville, right around the mm -hmm. corner from our friend, Matt, who I believe mm -hmm. is on yeah. episode, episode of your podcast here episode recently. Episode four, Matt four. Yeah, yep. Matt four, episode four. Can't have a little <laughs> shout out to you there, buddy. Um, and uh, fascinating industry that's uh, very straightforward, but really has a lot of opportunities going forward. So um, yeah, we got a lot of different things that we've done and we're doing today. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about all that as well as uh, kind of what brought me here. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, uh, seeing, a, I saw a couple of things in, in the headlines today as far as uh, the stock market. And um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm not, not happy about it, but, uh, you know, I'm in, I'm in real estate and notes, mortgage notes. And, you know, I think uh, if nothing else, people are going to be looking for something else that may be a little more stable and recession resistant. Um, so I would guess that uh, you're in some pretty good um, asset classes there. And, you know, looking, looking pretty good going forward. Um, as far as your backstory, let's get into that a little bit. I've heard you on a couple of other podcasts. And again, I know you have a, a good following with your own show as well. Um, but, you know, refresh my memory. And for the listeners unfamiliar with you, uh, if you don't mind, dive into some of the adversity you've been through. And again, for, for the listeners out there, this is not, we're not trying to, you know, pry or get into topics that the guest is uncomfortable with. I'm not a therapist, you know, but, but the reality oh, wait, is, whoa, 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 wait that's what I, thought we were, I thought that's what we were doing today. That's after this, well, you know, I'll, <laughs> um, I'll just take some training online real fast and send you, send you a bill, but uh, no. Um, yeah. You know, the, the fact is we all have, we all have adversity we go through. It just takes on different, different forms. And um, we talked a little bit about this uh, last week, I think it was, um, you know, and, and everybody's story is different. Everyone's born into a different situation, different circumstances. Um, so why don't you tell the listeners kind of some of the hardships that, that you've faced in your life? Yeah, I just look, I just finished up lunch with, uh, with a friend, um, investor, and they, they were looking at my book and they said, man, I really, you know, I'm sorry, you lost both your parents. So, um, and I said, you know, we all have challenges that we've been through in our own lives. And, you know, it's, it's different for all of us, but I have kind of a different um, take on this, Jamie. And I think, you know, look, if you're, if you're listening to a show like this, maybe you already know it yourself, but I think the earlier in life that you face a challenge, the stronger you are in the latter part of your life. I think that's, that's true. And there's actually some research out, research out there that shows children that have lost parents end up being more successful later on in mm -hmm. life. And it's, it's an uncomfortable reality. It's not one you would but I lost my father when I was five years old. He was only 41. Um, I'm not, not too far from that, past that just here a couple of years ago. Um, my mother passed away 10 years ago, but the biggest impact in between those two was my best friend died when we were in college. 
And he was like a brother to me. He was my training partner. He was my roommate. Um, he's the kind of person that, you know, you just look at and you know what you're thinking and you laugh at, you laugh at the same things, but you're the only two people in the room laughing because no, nothing's been said, but you guys just, you just know, <laughs> you know, page. it was, yeah. yeah. And I mean, we spent a lot of time together on the bike training, traveling to races. Um, yeah, it was, it was very impactful. And I put my head down and my therapy at that time was racing my bike. I raced bicycles. I did that for about 20 years. Um, and I raced for another year and I came out the other side and I just thought like, what am I doing? You know, I'm meant for more than this. And that's really the start of my journey into the financial space because I said, well, I need to live life to the fullest and I need to honor the life that my friend, Chris, his name was Chris as well. Mm -hmm. Didn't have the chance to live and to do that, Jamie, you need financial resources mm -hmm. in this world. So, sure. you know, I, I, I went to look, I'm not, I'm open. Like I said, I'm an open book here. I've been to, I've been to therapy. I've explored these issues, mm -hmm. um, how it affects my current relationships. And I think one thing that's interesting, and this might not be what we're talking about here today, but it's all good. look, we hire coaches, like we hire real estate coaches. Mm -hmm. We have, um, trainers like, you know, Michael Jordan had a trainer in addition yeah. to, you know, his coaches, we, we do this in every area of our life. Yeah, yeah, when it comes to things like relationships, so many people <laughs> shy away from it. Yeah, no, and the reason I'm chuckling is my wife and I were literally talking about this last night, <laughs> this exact topic. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and I do want to get back to that. So, and again, not trying to drill down too too far into painful topics, but Bring it on. Um, either with your parents or, or with your friend, your best friend, Chris, um, speak a little more about that as far as just kind of what were the causes of death or what was kind of the surrounding situation at the time and your mindset at, at the yeah. time? Yeah, it was. Um, so my father was a pilot. He actually died in a plane crash. He had a single engine plane yes. and he's from Wisconsin. And I was actually supposed to be with him on that plane. And he was flying up to Wisconsin to meet um, my mother, my sister and, my, and myself in Green Bay, uh, which is where the airport is there. And he was coming in around dusk and his engine failed about 10 miles out from shore. And if, if anybody's been to Lake Michigan or flown over it, you know, it's like the ocean. I mean, mm -hmm. it's miles wide. It's, it's, you know, um, you know, uh, super deep, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of feet deep. And yeah, they, they, uh, they weren't able to mm -hmm. find him. Um, not in any wow. reasonable amount of time. Um, so that was really tough on my mom, my mom, she passed away from cancer um, fallopian tube cancer, which is very insidious because most times it's not found until it's stage four, which is, um, when they found it with her. So we were fortunate. We had, had some time to spend with her and she got to meet my oldest son, who's now 12. Um, but my friend Chris died, uh, very abruptly. He had a brain hemorrhage, basically aneurysm, um, in the back of his brain. And I was there, I was there that day. I was, went to the hospital and I was the one that identified him in the hospital. Um, and it's, it's really hard when somebody's ripped, ripped from you like that. Um, and it's painful yes. to watch their family, you mm -hmm. know, go through it and do that. So what were your, what were your thoughts at the time? What was going, I mean, I know you've had time yeah. to reflect obviously now. Yeah. And so, um, you may yeah. look at it a little bit differently now than you did at the time. What was it like at the time? Yeah. I'm going to kind of go in reverse order here sure. of, um, kind of the levels of pain that, yeah. that I experienced with each one. And my father, I was too young to really understand, you know, like sure. my, my great sure. aunt would tell me, she's like, oh yeah, when I see my dad again. And, um, and I would, you know, I uh, was raised going to church. We would go to church three times a week for choir and youth service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I talked about my father being with Jesus and, and that mm -hmm. was very comforting for mm -hmm. me. Um, my mother, we had some unresolved issues when she passed away, but having, you know, a couple of years to spend with her and, and have co some conversations with her. Um, it's, it's a lot different when you, when you have that, you know, when you have that, um, uh, kind of a knowledge that, that someone might not be with you. Sure. You have a warning say. or, you know, some time yeah. to prepare, I guess. Yeah. But, um, it, it's, it's hard when somebody like that is, uh, that you have, you know, a family relationship with a very strong emotional relationship with, mm -hmm. um, the things that weren't resolved, weren't resolved, not by my choice. They were mm -hmm. because she wasn't able to deal with those mm -hmm. and, in her, yeah. um, you know, her situation. And, and that's, that's unfortunate, you know, to sure. have somebody that, that goes through that. But for me, 
you know, having your friend, I don't think I've ever, I'll ever fully recover from that. I think, and, you know, it, it definitely inexorably changed me because you never want to feel that pain again mm -hmm. when somebody's pulled away from you. So, you know, it, it's hard to really develop deep relationships after you've been hurt so deeply. Mm -hmm. And people look, if you're listening, you know, people, whether you're in a relationship where somebody you break up with somebody or you're divorced or, you know, somebody dies, you know, we want to protect ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at having relationships and doing that, but at the same mm -hmm. time, you know, it's, it's painful. Um, sure. and it's also hard when you experience that depth of a relationship with somebody and it's really not possible to experience that again. What I mean mm -hmm. is we were, we were friends through high school mm -hmm. and during very formative parts of our lives. Mm -hmm. And I won't ever be able to have that, you know, mm -hmm. that bond with somebody again. Yeah. Um, but the flip side is I'm very grateful for the time I got to spend, mm -hmm. you know, with, with all those people in my life. No, I appreciate you getting vulnerable there. I mean, it's not easy to talk about and relive. And, um, but so yeah, with, with your friend, Chris, it's like, yeah, not only <laughs> did he pass, but you, you're not, you, like you said, you're not going to be able to replicate or duplicate that. And so there's yeah. almost like a double, you know, I don't know, <laughs> it's a double hardship there. So that's, that's really, really tough. Um, and again, I don't, we're glossing over this, like it's no big yeah. deal, but it's, I appreciate that. Um, so then how did you, uh, you started to get into it a little bit. What, what did your, how did you change your mindset or how did you approach kind of the, your future from there? Yeah. So this is where, this is where you look at kind of the, um, there's, there's two ways. And I'm going to say the first way I'm going to say it, it, it might, it might sound callous, but then I'll explain. So this is where like the silver lining comes in. And what I mean is, if you ever lost somebody, I'm sure the last thing that person wants is for you to go through the rest of your life and, and, and really put the brakes on anything or live less of a life because you're, you're burdened by that or not having mm -hmm. that person in, in your life. Anybody that loves you wants you to go and experience life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my friends say I'm lucky and I don't have to go into details, but I've had, I've had some good fortune in my life. Just look, things that have happened, things that are kind of unusual. And I say that's because I have a lot of people watching out for me because they want me, they're looking down, they want me to be successful. And I believe mm -hmm. that. I feel like I have a positive energy, but at the same time, I feel like it's my duty to do all these things. Mm -hmm. It's my duty to, to live like this. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the, the, I said, you know, I said silver lining, um, but when you lose somebody and you realize that life is finite, especially as a young person, so Jamie, I crossed 41 years old and I achieved all these things in my life. And I realized my father was 41 when he died. And I know that in the back of my head, I had this, this feeling of fatality that, you know, I had, there was things I had to get done. So mm -hmm. when you know that the time value of money has, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the, uh, the value of time right. has, has time on the bottom of the equation. So I'm an engineer by training. Yeah. Think of it that way. When you're young, you think you're going to live forever. You're going right. to live forever. And that number on the bottom is infinity. The value is zero, mm -hmm. right? Right. As sure. soon as you put a value or as, yes, as soon as you put an actual mm -hmm. value on that time, whether you're yeah. going to live 10 days or 10,000 days or, mm -hmm. you know, 50,000 days, whatever that number is, the value of your time goes up exponentially. Sure. Yep. And that's what I think happens subconsciously in my mm. mind. And as soon as really once, you know, when I was an adult and Chris passed away, mm -hmm. I thought, hang on a second. I got, I got stuff to do. Mm -hmm. Like I got stuff to do. I'm a serious person. I'm going to get mm -hmm. things done. And, you know, some people are like, why do you work so hard? My neighbor <laughs> was like, if you don't have to work anymore, why do you still work? Yeah. I'm like well, one, I enjoy it <laughs> yeah. and it energizes me. Yeah. And two, it's my duty. I have an impact that mm -hmm. I'm here to make on this planet. Right. It's not all, it's not all about you to collect as many cool toys as you can or whatever. And, you know, nothing wrong with cool toys. I'm not That's <laughs> saying right. that, but, yeah. uh, but it's bigger than yourself is, is what it sounds Absolutely. like. Um, Absolutely. Uh, and, and look also again, like it's it, being on earth and being successful, you know, and mm -hmm. having that abundance mindset mm -hmm. means you get to enjoy the things that you experience. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I, I flew to Mexico for a meeting. I bought a first class ticket. I really enjoyed it. And you know what? I really enjoyed the conversation with the gentleman 
um, mm-hmm. that I that I sat next to on the nice. plane, and that you know it's it's fun it's fun to do things like that or you know people mm-hmm. buy nice cars you know whatever you're into you know mm-hmm. but it's about the experiences and enjoying mm-hmm. that not feeling guilty you know because of the, your success necessarily yeah so then talk about kind of your your business a little bit and and you know do you come from money or how has your financial picture changed over the years yeah so you know it's funny i was in college and uh, i was dating this girl and i had a uh, I had a used car. It was a Honda Accord. It was nice, but it wasn't like anything amazing. It mm-hmm. was a stick shift. It had like, I think 40,000 miles on it when I bought it. You know, again, mm-hmm. it's a nice car, but it wasn't super expensive or anything. And I, I paid for it with my own money. I actually took a loan out from my grandfather and I paid him mm-hmm. back monthly. Okay. Um, so it was, a, it was a car loan. Just happened to be to my, to, from my grandfather because I didn't have sure. credit at the time. So uh, I, had, I, I this girl sits in my car and she's like, oh, it must be nice to have parents that buy you such a nice car. <laughs> And mm-hmm. I didn't kick her out of the car, but <laughs> that was the last time we went on a date because having right. somebody make that assumption, you know, I right. had a loft business. I bought loft beds. I had, um, I had, uh, I worked, I sold Herbalife. Um, mm-hmm. I raced my bike and made money when I raced my bike. I had all these things mm-hmm. I opened at a gym. So I'd open the gym at four forty-five in the morning, you know? So it's like, okay, I don't need you to, you know, make right. this assumption about me. Sure. And look, I was raised very middle-class. Mm-hmm. You know, after my father passed away, it was my grandmother made my clothes. I mean, we ate vegetables out of cans. Um, we hardly ever went on vacation. Um, I mean, I never, I never left the country until I met my wife, who's from Canada. Um, okay. I mean, it's like I had yeah. a very, a very comfortable, yet um, very modest upbringing. Sure. Yeah. So, you know, just to kind of translate that into where we are today. Mm-hmm. I bought my first property in Blacksburg, Virginia, where I went to college with $3,000. And my mother did co-sign on the loan for me. Mm-hmm. So not that my parents never gave me anything or didn't help me on the journey, but <laughs> right. a $90,000 townhouse and having your mom co-sign on the loan, that was, that was a nice kickstart. Now, the flip side is, I mean, I had to like hitchhike basically like with my, from my, or I have to hitch rides from my friends when I was racing my bicycle because my parents wouldn't, didn't really support me. I bought my first bike with my own money from my paper route that I had. Um, they would help me if I requested it, but they wouldn't give it. I flew to the national championships. They didn't come with me. And I slept on the floor of a friend's hotel room and I got them to drive me to the race. So the flip side of all that, you know, mm-hmm. which that's light adversity, like in the stuff that we've been <laughs> I mean, talking sure. about. Yeah. But what it taught me was you've got to go out, Chris, and make your own luck. Mm-hmm. You've got to, you've got to decide what you want in your life for yourself, figure out how to get it. I was out getting sponsors for our cycling team to pay for our clothing and our races and all these things at 15 years old. Mm-hmm. So you think that experience of talking to people to quote unquote, invest in our cycling team didn't help me today when I talked to investors about sure. investing in our deals. That was amazing. But at the yeah. time I sure, I sure was jealous of those kids that were showing up in their brand new Volkswagens with their $5,000 bikes on the car, sometimes mm-hmm. two or three bikes with right. carbon wheels. And, you know, it, it took me three years to buy that stuff from saving up money and yeah. shoveling driveways and snow and yeah. all that. No, so it's, I mean, could you have grown up in, in more poverty than you did? Yes. I mean, it sounds like you, you know, had a relatively comfortable life, like you said, but, yeah. but did you, did, did you, did you learn and appreciate the value of a dollar? Absolutely. And it sounds like you've been a uh, kind of a hustler uh, for quite some time. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's really good. Um, Yeah. And I think, you know, it was, for me, it was kind of a sweet spot, Jamie, because I had enough so that mm -hmm. I had the ability to, you know, to, to uh, have up like the opportunities were there. I wasn't prevented from opportunities, right. But I also wasn't given a lot. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. I I don't know if I believe that anyone is truly self-made um sure you know so you know we can get into you know you can argue that all day long and well you know so did you have certain advantages of course i mean we We all all do do. Um, and that's and and that's where if i may i think this is really this is like this probably is the most important point i'd like to make today okay so a lot of people like that the girl i dated in college right Mm -hmm. you look at somebody and you make an assumption about somebody Mm -hmm. you don't know what brought them to that place. Mm -hmm. If you knew 
that losing a parent increased your chances of success in your life? Would you wish that on somebody? <laughs> so whenever you look at somebody, if they're successful, you know, if you're out there and, you know, there's, there's they, the politicians, unfortunately, play this game where they say, oh, you can't, you know, you don't have the same advantages of this person, or we need to, you know, help these people out. You have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. You have to be very careful because it's like the wild animal that you find and you say, well, I'm going to help this wild animal and you help it out. And sometimes you can't, that animal won't ever be accepted. Mm -hmm. It's in its native Mm -hmm. um, environment. Anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be careful with the assumptions we make. We have to always question the assumptions. Right. And we have to make sure, in my opinion, that we provide as many opportunities as possible, but be careful not to blunt the motivation and mm -hmm. the full potential of individuals by, by doing something or taking something from, from one group or giving it to another group. That's, we gotta be sure. very careful about these things. Yeah, and I think it's also just a good reminder, like you said, that you don't wanna make assumptions about people's lives. Like my, my wife, they grew up with some money um, and she, she won't want me to go into too much detail, but um, so there were people kind of like, back, you know, in school and things that would make assumptions, oh, it must be nice, must be nice to have all this money. Well, and this is where I'm not going to go into detail, but they they had a lot of adversity growing up as well from a, you know, family perspective. And so um, would she have traded the money that they had growing up, you know, for not having to experience what she had to? Absolutely. In a heartbeat. I mean, she, you know, so, but yeah. from the outside, oh, must be nice. And um, so I just think that's where it gets to look, I can't control how you were born or what you, your circumstances. I mean, yeah. you, we all just have to do the best we can with, with what yeah. we were given. Um, Absolutely. And, and look, I was, look, I was blessed with a lot of talent in different areas. Um, I was not blessed in other areas and, you know, and, but we all, we all have an opportunity and, you know, I think I've said it earlier, you know, but it is my duty in my yeah. mind to get, to get the most out of the life that I've been given. And that's, well, and, that's and what I you mentioned. To do. You said impact too. So it's, it's, you know, the more, let's be honest, the more money you can make, the more resources you have at your fingertips, the more of a positive impact you can make in the world. So um, I think yeah. that's important as well. So how did you, before we get into some uh, kind of rapid fire questions, how did you get yeah. into, you know, real estate and self-storage and car washes? You talked a little bit about it, but how did you make that transition into where you are today? Yeah. So I talk, I talk in my book a lot about why and how I went from, you know, just buying single family rentals and, and mm -hmm. doing those starting at 21 um, to in my thirties. And I, I say, Hey, read my book, go to our website. Don't spend 15 years. Like I did making mistakes, like take the shortcut, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can learn in 15 minutes or maybe, in, you know, 15 months what it took me 15 years to do, but we transitioned to commercial real estate, Jamie, because it's scalable. The returns were better. And you know, it's a lot less hassle, you know, multifamily, I call it the holy grail in my book. Now, yeah. multifamily had the best year ever in history last year in 2021. Amazing year. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of other great areas in commercial real estate out there. Mm -hmm. um, we we've moved from older, um, you know, uh, 70s and 80s built value add properties to newer class B plus and and a value add properties like we're buying a deal right now in Savannah, Georgia, which was built in 2016. We're putting about $12,000 a door into that property. It's a value add property, but it's a very nice value add property. Mm -hmm. Self-storage has always been on my radar. We mm -hmm. actually looked at some self-storage and mobile homes before we bought our first multifamily deal. So it's always been in my mind to add those mm -hmm. back into the portfolio, um, which we've done. They're complementary. They're, they're different. There's some mm -hmm. similarities, but really my whole strategy and our group strategy is around the value add model, which I call the mm -hmm. Warren Buffett strategy. So we're looking mm -hmm. for businesses or real estate that has the opportunity to improve the value, improve the net operating income in a controllable fashion so we can yep. increase the value of that property. But I also like cash flow properties. So sure. you take cash flow plus value add plus some of our other rules like you know low loan, low loan to value. Um, you add all those together and all of these, all of these areas make good sense. Mm -hmm. um, because cap rates and what's happened, you know, we've expanded our net a little bit and considered other things that are mm -hmm. you know a little bit more work. Right. Like car washes, we had to build out a team um, to buy those, but there's yeah. more opportunity because there's a lot more inefficiencies out there. 
That makes sense. Yeah, we've um, expanded our buy box, if you will, in the yeah. last few years ourselves, just because yeah. deals are harder to find. And, and there's a lot of money out there chasing yield and chasing returns. Um, That's so right. That makes makes a lot of sense. Um, and you have what, a couple other partners you work with? Is that right? Yeah, I have three main partners that I work with. Okay. Um, gotcha. In, in most of those spaces. Yeah. And I look, I do some smaller projects. I got a development I'm doing here. I'm just mm -hmm. outside of Asheville. Um, yeah, I, you know, my wife's an architect, we're working together on that. So there's some other nice. little things I do to, uh, to, to scratch my creative itch, if you will, yeah. um, in the real estate space. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to fire off some questions and we'll see where it goes. Bring it on. Um, what do people misunderstand about you? Um, well, I already told the story about the car and being given. So, yeah. <laughs> right. no, so um, I, uh, aside from that, um, I think, you know, this isn't as deep as some of the conversations we've had, but a lot of people say to me, Hey, Chris, when did you start investing in real estate? You know, this is people that know me in the mm -hmm. medical device space. And what I tell them is I've actually always been an investor. When mm -hmm. I bought my property at 21, I wanted to be an investor. I ran out of money though, Jamie, because like I said, I didn't have a bunch of family money. So yeah. I had to go make money in the space. So a lot of people assume that I became a real estate investor after I was a professional, after I was a sales professional. The mm -hmm. truth is I did that out of necessity to be an investor. Hmm. Interesting. That's a good, that's a good one. So you weren't an overnight success. <laughs> I, I say, I say real estate is get rich slow. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, overnight success built, built, um, one 16 day at a time and one, <laughs> one on call night in the hospital at a time. So let's see, what was one of your biggest failures or however you want to frame that, um, something that you wish you could go back and change a decision you made or an action you took or something that maybe you wish you could redo. Yeah. I mean, it's easy. It's easy to say, Hey, everything's worked out great. You know, like here's the plan. But the fact of the matter is it took me way too long. Like if I knew what I knew today, Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have taken me 15 years, you know, it would have taken yeah. me maybe five years you know, sure. to get where I was. So I, I made a lot of mistakes. Um, I didn't sell properties as fast as I, I would have, you know, mm -hmm. leading up to 2008, I actually started to list properties for sale, but I, I didn't quite time the market mm -hmm. just right. So mm -hmm. I think, you know, we're, we're getting to a similar point in the market cycle where we have to be careful. And, you know, I think that what I would do going forward or what I mm -hmm. am doing going forward is, you know, lock profits in you know, stay conservative. If you can make money every day and you can get a little richer every day and don't take steps back, that's what mm -hmm. the ultra rich do. That's what family offices do. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, avoid those setbacks. Sure. Yeah. I know you, uh, I did read, I read most of your book. I, I think, uh, yeah, it's really good. I got to finish it up, but, um, I think you talk about infinite banking and I do some of that as well. So absolutely. Um, yeah. That's, I would have started doing that in a much, much bigger way. Yeah. It took me years. I was actually very upset with my agent when I found out that he uh -huh. knew what I was doing and didn't advise me on it. So that's why we put together our educational materials. And that's on our banking link on our website that people can got check it. out. Yeah. That's one thing I would definitely do myself is start that, start our policies a lot, a lot earlier. <laughs> Amen. Amen to that. So, um, let's see if you could have coffee with a, any historical figure, who would it be? Who would it be and why? Historical if you drink coffee. figure. I, I do drink coffee. Um, let's see historical figure. Uh, I would, I would pick one of the founding fathers and okay. I, I won't limit it, but I would pick one of the yeah. founding fathers. And the reason is there's a lot of debate today, you know, and, you know, we're, there's some Supreme Court stuff and it, it doesn't really matter which side you fall on. But I would be very curious to see what their perspective was on mm -hmm. the future, because you have a lot of people that are like, oh, the Constitution needs to be changed. You know, these old mm -hmm. guys that figured this out, you know, 300 years right. ago didn't, didn't really. Are know. they like, still relevant? Like, it, you right. Know. Is this still wrong? I think, right. you know, I think it'd be really interesting to get the perspective, um, mm -hmm. you know, where they were at that time, because I, I believe that America is the greatest country mm -hmm. on the planet I'm with and you. we're just yeah. very fortunate to be where yeah. we are. We're starting to take a lot of things for granted, I think. Um, yeah. yeah, that question is kind of like a Matt Forrest ice cream question, I guess, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and so let's see if you were given Actually, let's, let's go with this one. If you had to write another book, um, what would it be about? Well, we just came out with a book on infinite banking. So it's okay. actually, let me see if I got a, if anybody's watching here, 
Um, and if you email me, I'll, I'll send a copy to you for free since it's not officially launched yet, but it's called Money Insights for Sales Professionals. Nice. And what it is, it is a summary. And this is a very short book. So my book's about 100 pages. This is less than 50. Um, it, and it's written um, uh, by myself and my partners uh, uh, crafted the, the first version. But it's about the specific strategy that I've been using to um, use life insurance as a funnel to mm -hmm. invest in cash flow producing properties. So that's a little bit cheating there, Jamie. But <laughs> But That's there, all right. I, That's I had good. that. I had that in my back pocket. So that was a. Yeah. That was a. That was. I a teed you up for that one. You absolutely um, did. So let's see. What's a challenge that you're facing in your business right now? Business yes. or life, however you want to run with it. Yeah. That. Well, do we want to talk about the, the issues I'm facing as a parent dealing with my children? No, let's not talk about that. Uh, that we'll, we we'll, we'll do it at the second episode. That's the therapy session. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. No, no. I am look having kids. If if you're listening, you know, like it's it's the most amazing thing. And also, uh, some days I'm just like. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if this child is going to make it through the rest of the day in my hands. <laughs> yes. We have, we have two kids and it's, I mean, it is super yeah. challenging. Yeah. But it's, <laughs> listen, it's a, it's a, it's a learning experiment or a learning experience, I should yeah. say. And, and it's somewhat of an you, experiment too. An experiment. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> but it makes you, you have to be a better person, right? You yeah. Know, ch children force you to analyze your assumptions and your actions and, and become, you know, more rational and better. But yeah. when it comes to my business, scaling. So how do you scale? And I mean, just, you know, like I was talking to my coach, uh, the past two weeks here, and we're going through my schedule and everything. He's like, you're doing everything right. Basically, like you're getting to the, you're just stretched, like, so bring on the right people in the right places. Mm -hmm. We've done a terrific job um, with the team with acquisitions and all that. But mm -hmm. um, there's a couple other areas that I need to scale in and need to really make sure that, you know, we're, we're bringing in the right people. What, what does your team look like? Is it I mean, as far as yeah you know, do you use virtual assistants? Do you have, how many employees do you have? What is, what does your, your business look like? Yeah. Yeah. So our operating company that I work with, there's 30 employees and that's everybody from asset management to acquisitions mm -hmm. to investor relations. Um, you know, when it comes to next level income and putting all the education stuff together, mm -hmm. I have, I have a team that does all my podcasts for me. I have a booking agent, um, to, to help, you know, get me in front of the right people. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a virtual assistant who helps, you know, with a lot of my day-to-day -day, uh, mm -hmm. communications. If you put your information in there, put your address in to get a free copy of my book, she will send you a copy of my book, um, today when you put that in there. So she keeps the wheels turning, even if I'm on the road. So sorry, I might not sign the copy, but if you request it, I might. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, we have, I have a, a social media team. I have a team for my website. So, um, some are employees, some are not. And then probably yeah. one of the key components of my team is we have a nanny now and she mm. helps out in the afternoons nice. with our kids, shuttling them with them around, picking up groceries. Nice. Um, it was hard. It was hard to come to grips with, with hiring somebody mm. that's going to spend time with our children. But mm -hmm. what I found Jamie is it's really helped us have more quality time as a family and not just crappy time where you're, you sure. know, running around in a car and half the time, not even with them. Right. No, that's, that's good. Are you, yeah. you mentioned a coach, a business coach, I presume. Um, yeah. Are you a part of any other, any masterminds or anything like that? Yeah. So um, one of the big masterminds that I was a uh, founding member of is called the passive income mastermind. I'm happy to share information with that with anybody that's interested. So our goal as a mastermind is looking at different opportunities, different strategies, different education, like even the life insurance strategy mm -hmm. that we we're talking about. That's, that's part of the puzzle that we use to mm -hmm. increase our passive income to 200% or more of our expenses. So that's kind of the goal of that mastermind. Um, and I have, I have some other masterminds that I participate in. I have a mm -hmm. mastermind with my coaching clients. So we do uh, two monthly calls. So we have our, our monthly mastermind call and an expert call where we bring in um, people like um, this, this past month was um, oh yeah, for tax day, we had a, an accountant come in and talk about mm. specific strategies for W2 employees, you know, that, that are looking for, you know, ways to optimize their tax situation, for example. Got it. That's sounds like you're very active in the, in the mastermind space. <laughs> so that's, Hey, good. listen, I, I coach people, but I spend, I spend more on coaching than I made the first year I was out mm. working for Pfizer on an annual basis. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big believer and I think you have to, you know, constant development putting people around you that are a higher level and having sure. you know that accountability is so key yeah. to achieve ultimate success. 
Yeah, that's been a, a theme with these episodes we've done so far for the, especially the, honestly, the more successful people tend to, at least this is anecdotal. It's not a, <laughs> you know, double blind placebo testing yeah. or anything, but uh, yeah, the, they, the guys and, and girls who are making a lot of money tend to be plugged into, they're, they're constantly being challenged by, you know, somebody at the, the next level. So yeah. that's really yeah, good. Yeah, it's, I think it's more common, um, I'm sorry, I think it's less common to find somebody that I talk to that's kind of a, you know, at this level, Jamie, that mm -hmm. does not have a coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, sure. I, I talk, I, I very rarely find people yeah. that, that don't have a coach or some sort of accountability, yeah. um, you know, at this level. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Um, all right. How about a movie you'd recommend for our audience? Do you, do you watch movies? Uh, I love movies. And when I was racing bicycles, you know, I would, I would watch a movie every evening. So I would, I'd ride, I would come home and I just like lay on the couch and watch a movie. Um, there's a great, it's, oh, it's gotta be 30 years old now, maybe 20, 20 plus years old Gattaca. Um, it's okay. got Ethan Hawke and, uh, um, J uh, oh, what is his name? Um, doesn't really matter, but it's yeah. G A T T A C A. And yeah. there's this scene in the movie and I urge you to go watch it. So there's these two brothers and this talks all this basically brings together every, this was not a setup. This is everything <laughs> we talked about today, but this just popped into my head because this yeah. is how important this is to me. One of the brothers was born naturally. Like he just, his parents had a baby. The other one is this designer baby where they optimized mm -hmm. him genetically. The younger brother, and sorry, I'm ruining the movie, but the younger <laughs> brother, Ethan Hawke, he ends up becoming an astronaut, which is like, you know, you have to be, you have to be one of these like designer kids, but he busts the system. He runs into his brother who is the inspector or like the, the off the police officer that's investigating this situation and catches him. Well, when they were younger, they would swim out into the ocean and they would see who could swim the furthest before getting scared and turning back. And the older brother won every single time, except one day I'm getting chills thinking about it. <laughs> younger brother, so Ethan Hawke swims out in the ocean and his older brother begins to drown and he, he pulls him back to shore. So they meet, never talked about it for the rest of their lives. They actually didn't see each other after that until that day. And he said, they end up at the ocean again, because they're like, let's go to the ocean. Like, this is this whole thing. Mm -hmm. And he looks at him, he's like, how did you beat me? They're swimming out in the ocean. And he's yelling at him, stop, stop, stop. And he goes, stop, I can't see the shore. And he's like, we need to turn back. And he's like, it's, we're close to the other side at this point. And he goes, I don't understand. He's like, how did you do it? And he's like, how did I do it? He's like, you've, you figured out, you caught me, you figured it out. He goes, no, how did you beat me that night swimming? Mm -hmm. And he said, I never saved anything for the trip back. He put a hundred, the point is mm -hmm. in this life, yeah. you've got to take what you've been given and mm -hmm. you give a hundred percent and you can't keep looking over your shoulder. You can't worry about what other people think. You can't have a scarcity mindset. You have to know and believe you're going to be successful with every cell in your body and use everything you've been given hmm. to be successful. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd like to take credit for, you know, setting that all up with that question. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That, that was really good because you really brought it all home. I mean, that's, that's, fantastic i'll have to I'll have to watch that um is there anything else you want to add as we wrap up here any other kind of parting thoughts i mean you've you've it, this has been really good um anything come to mind thank you i listen i think again that scene you know just again i'm, I'm so grateful um for the opportunity to be here jamie grateful for everything that i've been given and that's what i would say you know if if you're having a tough day if you're having a tough time begin your day with with a, a gratitude practice and just, yeah. you know, think about what you're grateful for. Cause no matter, uh, you know, and I learned this from being in the OR a lot of days, a lot of times I'd be like, man, I'm having a crappy day and I'd be upset. I'd be tired. I hadn't slept this and that, but I always remembered there's somebody on the table that I was there for to help get the best outcome for them on that day. And mm -hmm. I would say, you know what, no matter how bad the day is, I'm not laying there on the table having surgery today. So again, no matter what you're going through today in your life this year, remember there's always somebody out there that's in a worse position. Focus on yeah. what you have to be grateful for and use that as fuel to move forward. That's fantastic. Uh, you've dropped a lot of inspirational uh, ideas and, and not just ideas, but you know, truths. And uh, I really do appreciate you 
spending time and talking about some difficult topics and some, you know, genuinely, uh, you know, challenging <laughs> circumstances that you've been through for sure. And um, I know that our audience is going to take take a lot of value from this. Um, as we as we wrap up here, remind our audience where they can reach out to you. Yeah, real easy. Next Level Income is the is the company. Nextlevelincome.com is the website. And Next Level Income is the book that you can get for free if you click on the book link. And if there's anything that we talked about today you want to learn more about or that I can help you out with in your life, reach out to me at chris at nextlevelincome.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. It's been awesome. I really appreciate you spending your, your time. Like I said, I know you are busy. Um, so thanks a lot. And my pleasure. Uh, this has been the highlight of my day so far. <laughs> nice. To our listeners out there, we also appreciate you spending your most valuable asset with us, which is your time. And we do appreciate ratings and reviews. And please help us get this, this podcast off the ground and uh, share, share it with as many of your friends and, and uh, colleagues as you can. Thanks all. Take care.